To Rebelpreneur Radio, helping you break the rules and build the business you need for the life you want. And now, broadcasting his pirate signal from somewhere beyond the status quo. Here's your host, best selling author, marketing and media strategist, Ralph Brogdon. Hello and welcome to Rebelpreneur Radio. It's the show that helps you build the business you need so you can live the life you want. I'm Ralph Brogdon. A famous And I think a very wise marketing man once said that you need to fall in love with your customers. And when I first heard him say that, I thought that's the dumbest thing. I mean, I like my customers, but falling in love with my customers, I don't know if I'm prepared to do that. But he insisted if you're going to be successful in marketing or in sales or in business, you've got to fall in love with your customer. I didn't understand that 20 years ago. But more and more, I am beginning to see the wisdom of that. And so then naturally, who who specializes in helping us wrap our hearts around this sales process? How can we follow our heart and attract our ideal customer? I have the perfect guest today who is going to help us with that. I'm speaking with Christine Schlonsky. She is the queen of the sales success mindset. She's a multi-talented leader in the field of sales success mindset, motivation, and strategies, and she works with heart-centered entrepreneurs who love what they do, but they dislike selling, and she shows you how to make sales with ease, grace, confidence, and ask your price. So, Christine, welcome to Rebel Pernuva Radio. Well, thank you so much, Ralph. I'm so excited to, to be here. And just from your intro, you know, the little rebel in me <laughs> can just uh, come out and see myself with a leather jacket, helping people <laughs> to heart sell. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's neat. Well, it, it looks like that we are on the same page. It, it took me a little longer, I suspect, than it did you to get around to this idea of falling in love with our customers. It is a revolutionary idea. I think you're a great fit for the show and, and to... Speak to us about this idea of changing our approach to sales from something that we don't like to something that really flows and coming to people from that place of love. I really want to find out more about that. First, tell us and tell our listeners a little bit about you. How did you get started in sales and what's your background? Yeah, I'd love to. You know, I was looking for a better city to live in where I had more opportunities and things to do. Um, so um, I studied in the south of Germany and I, I chose Berlin as um, my big apple. And uh, I wanted to work in a big company. So I just sent my to- CV to a company that I thought was a perfect fit for me. And the only position they had was in sales. And it was even worse when I got the news, it was cold calling over the phone. (laughs) And I never, ever intended to be in sales, let alone to call a stranger, tell them my little pitch and ask for a lot of money. Wow. Yeah, that's really (laughs) throwing you into the deep end of the pool without you knowing how to swim. (laughs) Exactly. Yeah. So my back then boss was a very good salesperson (laughs) and he sold me the job and he told me, you know, Christine, um, you can learn this, right? You just need to follow what we tell you and you're going to be fine. So my desire to move to Berlin from, you know, the Black Forest area um, where there it's beautiful landscape, but not that much to do. Um, was really the motivation to say yes to this job. Hmm. And, you know, I started like so many people start. I worked really, really hard. I did what I was told. The good thing was I had a really great product. I believed in the product. So I never had the feeling like, you know, I'm just taking somebody's money and run. Mm -hmm. But 
not knowing how to approach people, just dialing a number, getting by the personal assistant of the CEO or director or managing director was something that was pretty um, scary. But I was willing to learn and I was willing to practice. And I figured out that I actually was pretty good following that path and learning. But always I had to put in so much energy because I had this perception of how I needed to be as this professional salesperson. Hmm. So, for example, I did not laugh on the phone, right? I had the most serious conversation you can even imagine. <laughs> <laughs> like, looking back, I'm thinking like, wow, how, how could I have survived, like, in my skin, not having any fun? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, um, and then, you know, one day you climb up that corporate ladder and you start having success and, you know, your paycheck gets more and more attractive. But I started to feel empty inside. And I asked myself, well, then, is that all there is? There, there must be more was definitely the answer from within. And somehow I discovered personal development. And since I was in a place where I thought, you know, you can just, you know, change your job thinking the grass is greener on the other side, or you can actually solve what's within you and then everything will change outside as well. Mm -hmm. So I became a coach and I learned a lot about different personalities and ways of thinking and feeling and, you know, being introvert, extrovert and, and all these things. And I started to apply what I've learned from coaching into my sales. And be way before that, I had given me the permission to, you know, have a little bit more fun <laughs> on the phone that had already made a, a big switch. But from what I learned in coaching, I really took the approach you talked about, learn to love your customers. And I stopped judging or projecting something into the customer like, oh, they sound like they don't have any money. Oh, oh, they sound like they couldn't do this or, or that. Or I was just open and I held the space and I, you know, put the intention that whoever says yes to what I have to offer, I will, you know, give them everything I have, like give them the best product, take care of them, give them the best service. And you can only do that when you come from that place of love. Hmm. That's such and a that great made, point. I, I really love that. And, and when you said that, it triggered something I, I heard someone else say um, that, that is very similar. Serve them all and let God sort them out. <laughs> mm, yes. That, that is so yeah. true. What you said just right there, we, we bring into the sales conversation all of our preconceived ideas, we judge people about uh, what kind of resources they have, what their motivation is. We, we prejudge the situation and we actually lose the sale before we even begin that conversation very often, don't we? So, so true. So true. Especially, you know, we did a lot of research as well to see if their services would fit the product we were offering. So when you look like at an ugly homepage, <laughs> all of a sudden you thought, well, they don't have any money. They can't even afford a good looking <laughs> homepage, <laughs> which, you know, is so not true. Um, so it was it was a good teacher at the at the same time um, going through these years of um, being in, in cold calling um, and selling high ticket event uh, or events over the phone. Very, very good. Now, you progressed in that and, and you really stepped into this idea of turning sales into love, selling with your oh. heart. Now you're helping people. You, you are an international speaker. You've shared the stage with uh, people like Lisa Sasevich, Amy Porterfield, uh, John Asaroff, and so many others because of your unique way of working with people. Tell us a little bit more about what you do. And who do you help? Yeah, so I um, I help people that love what they do, but they just dislike sales or they are afraid of sales. And I just help them to see that 
they can enjoy the sales process. Because especially those heart-centered entrepreneurs who might be very driven and they have a great gift, but they don't share it, they get stuck in, you know, I don't want to sell myself. I don't want to um, come across sleazy or salesy. I don't want to ask for money. So they have all these blocks. And that's by true. Having and those and um, can I add another one in there? Yes. I please. shouldn't have to sell myself. Oh. I'm so yeah. brilliant and gifted that, that people should just see it and they should just throw money at me to uh, to hire me to do whatever it is that I do. And it never works out that way. But we tell ourselves that that's the way it should be. <laughs> totally right. And what people don't realize is that basically we are selling all day long. We just don't know. And we, it's not not every sale is um, something where you exchange money. Hmm. Right. You could. You know, you could sell your kids to go to bed on time or to to make their homework. Right. Um, you could sell your friends that the movie you are picking is the best movie and everybody should go <laughs> into the one you've chosen because, you know, wh whoever's in there or the story. So basically, we are selling, but we are not realizing it. And so when it comes to our businesses, we often look at the process and then it feels daunting or we lose confidence that somebody is going to say yes to what we have to offer. Hmm. So what is the the biggest thing that your clients struggle with when they're trying to. Well, sales is necessary to business. It, it, no, nobody makes any money. Nobody exchanges any value. Business can't happen unless somebody sells something. So. What do people struggle with so much? I mean, you mentioned some things like um, our our mindset towards uh, sales, uh -huh. that sales is sleazy or I don't want to sound salesy. And these, sounds like, they, these sound like excuses. What is the biggest obstacle that the people you're working with have to overcome if they're going to step into this mindset of loving their customers? Yeah, I think the biggest obstacle is, and, and you said that um, so beautifully, I should not have to sell. Like, I have a great offer and people will just discover that. Mm. But it's, it's, that doesn't work this way. Um, all the successful companies have salespeople and they're really good in selling because sales is the backbone of each business. So the biggest struggle they have is really changing their sales mindset, which is usually a negative one, a bad one, into something that I call the sales success mindset, mm. where they have fun conversations instead of sales conversations, where they stop undercharging and where they ask the price they truly want to ask for. Um, and that always comes with the delivery as well of the quality and the value they bring. So that's something that people don't really know how to package because they don't have that confidence that it takes to have a sales con conversation from A to Z, right? They, they have great conversations, but then when it comes to the point where they should be making an offer, something changes <laughs> and either they don't make the offer or they stammer on their words. Or I had even clients that said, well, you know, when it comes to the point, my stomach turns. Mm. I mean, there's no way I can make that offer. So I really help them to embrace sales and to make it fun. Mm. I, I love that. And, and what you're saying is so true. And I've spoken with, uh, clients and, and different people that I've worked with over the years. And it's amazing how many of them will tell me that the reason they don't get any sales is because they solve their client's problem on the phone for free in the free consultation. Mm, and yes, what, what I realized is that in, in those situations, they were talking to the prospect as if they were a client instead of a prospect. They weren't having yeah. a sales conversation. They were having a problem-solving conversation. And because they're so great at what they do, 
they solve the problem. And then the prospect says, well, that was great. Thanks. And then they leave uh-huh. and they don't buy anything. Yeah. Yeah. They gave away the whole store, so to speak. <laughs> yeah. And, and I realize it's because they're not actually having sales conversations. They're having oh. consulting conversations as though the person has already hired them. But that's not the purpose of the sales call. And it's not even the purpose. If you, if you do a free consultation, it, it's not to solve the problem. It's to diagnose the problem. And then to to make an offer. So what can people who struggle with this and and this is a huge thing, how can they begin to change how they do, how they approach it, how they look at it, what they say? Is there a process that you could take us through that would begin to to show some improvements in this area? Yeah, especially if we have a look at the consultation or or the strategy session or discovery session or what whatever you want to call that, um, I would just say like first of all get really clear what do you want as an outcome of that call, and that is you want to support this person with whatever problem or challenge they have. So just see it like when you would go to the gym. You would not expect from the first time that you come out with a six pack, (laughs) right? So your clients won't expect that either or your prospects. But when you over deliver in that session and you give it like you give them the solution or consulting, that can only be the first step. Mm. So basically you're sending them off with a, well, I feel great. I think, you know, my world is so much better now feeling, yeah. but I, I can handle this myself. Have... All I needed was a little, a little push in the right direction. And now I've got it. And that's how people leave from that, that initial consultation. And they never, they, they don't buy when, when they feel that way. Yeah. And, and they usually don't come back because, you know, it would look a little bit embarrassing as well. Mm. Right. You had that conversation and, we, you know, we parted ways because now I know I can do it on my own. And then I'm coming back. That feels like a weak <laughs> kind of thing. Yeah. So even if it's not in the conscious, it's in the subconscious. So for people then really calling you again, letting you know, well, you know what? I, I didn't get far on my own. <laughs> I would rather call a different person, <laughs> mm-hmm. not to be embarrassed with the one I had the call where I did not take the offer if there was even an offer made. Yeah, so that's a very good point. I think yeah, I think getting clear of what do you want to deliver in this session. And the session is there so you can see, is this the client you desire to work with? Because I also make the distinction, you know, that for me, especially working one-on-one where it's um, high-end, high-touch, I want to make sure that I'm only working with my so-called soulmate clients. Hmm. And these are people that, you know, I would love to spend time with. Um, I would love to have them over for dinner, right? Even if it's not possible because they're all over the world and I'm here in Germany. I'm still just thinking this way. How much time do I want to spend with this person? Will I be happy and excited when I see their name popping up in my calendar for the next session? Hmm. Right. How do you evaluate that? Is that just you go with your your instinct, go with your heart? Is that what the heart based sales and and loving your client is all about? Well, it's part of it. If I if I don't see that I'm the person to deliver the value, to deliver what they really need, um, if I'm just not the right person, I send them to somebody else or I give them other resources that I know of. Um, but yeah, it's part of, is obviously going with the gut, but then also I take those sessions to really dive into where are they? And sometimes they are not really clear of, you know, where are they in that situation? So they have a map, but they don't know where they are on the map. They just have an idea where they want to go. So you can't really come up with a plan if you don't even know where you are. Yeah. So giving people the space and the time so they can tell me where they are, where the pain points, like how bad is it? Is it something like a nice to have or are they really ready to move forward? 
because if they don't want to put in the time and the effort, I don't want to work with them. My clients need to get results mm. because that's, you know, that that's a fun part for me. You taking somebody, you know, from let's say um, they sell a VIP day, for example, and they may, might want to sell it for $350 and what they really, really, truly want is $2,000 and it's worth 5,000, yeah. right? So I want to take them to those steps because the $2,000 is more commitment with the people they are working, their clients. And also on the other hand, it changes their whole mindset. Like what's possible with a $2,000 that you wouldn't have had for your family? What, you know, what can you do with that kind of money? How can you give back if you wanted to? So it's going in all different um, ways of what happens when you actually step into that power, into that confidence, and you allow yourself to serve more people and to also ask your price. Mm. So in the session, really taking them to where they truly are and asking questions that might feel a little bit uncomfortable so that they can see what's possible if they start working with you. And for me, it's clear. I mean, it needs to be the commitment um, and they really need to be good action takers um, because I totally believe that, you know, without any action, you, you're never going to get anywhere. Mm, yeah, so true. And and wow, that's really, really helpful. I think everything that you're saying and, and especially having a clear outcome of, of yeah. what you're trying to do, where where you are trying to take people in your process and uh, th there are some mindset issues and, and some money issues that you've got to work through before you can lead anyone else down to a path of, of transformation. And that's what it's it's really all about. How would working with someone like you uh, really improve their chances for success as opposed to trying to, to do this work on their own? Yeah, well, I can just uh, say what one of my clients said. She told me that, you know, when when I told her sales is love, <laughs> she said she must have looked at me like I have three hats. <laughs> 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 and taking her to the process, but getting really clear on her own value. What is she bringing to her clients? Because something that comes to us with not much effort, we might not value as high. So really taking her on her own journey um, on, you know, pricing a product and putting together packages that have amazing value, but she is not undercharging, right? It's still, I believe, an over-delivering, but it should have a, a, a money exchange, an energy exchange that makes you happy and that you get the commitment of your clients on a different um, level. Yeah. So you know, it, it basically, it changes everything. It changes how they see their business, how they see the world, because once you get that money into the bank account, especially for those heart centered entrepreneurs who, who want to serve, who want to give back. Well, let me tell you, if you don't have any money in your bank account, what are you going to give back? Yeah. <laughs> right. You need to make sure that your cup is full so that you can give more. Mm. Like there's nothing, you know, if you, if you broke, how, how do you want to support others? Yeah. I, I think it was Tony Robbins that said that he wants to help the poor and he, he thinks the best way to help them is not to become them. <laughs> a lot of, yes. a lot of heart shaped or, or heart centered, I guess it could be heart shaped entrepreneurs if there is such a thing, but a lot of heart centered entrepreneurs and coaches, they want to help everybody, but they think that, that by, charging the lowest price that's actually going to help more people. And it, and it really doesn't for all the reasons that you're talking about is it doesn't allow you to really serve people at the highest and best level that you're capable of. And lots of psychological and heart issues involved in the giving and, and, and receiving of value in that situation. Very yeah. exciting and, and very, um, I'm, I'm really impressed with the, the depth and the breadth of your expertise in this area. What are you working on right now, Christine, that's got you really excited that you'd like to share with our listeners? Oh, yeah. Well, so I have a podcast called Heart Cells, 
And um, that's like a constant project going on because I, I love interviewing people and bringing experts um, onto the show where others can see, well, if they can do it and they were not born like this, they were not born as a natural salesperson, <laughs> right? They yeah. had to learn, they had to overcome um, some challenges. Um, and this is, you know, how, how they did it or what they learned in the process. Um, that is um, like an ongoing project. And then twice a year, I am running the sales mentality makeover masterclass. <laughs> mm. So where I have experts actually teaching on, on, a, on a point going deep so that it's really a class that people can, can take and um, learn so that they get practical and spiritual steps to increase their sales and to create true wealth without losing authenticity. Mm. Very, very exciting. And I'm really happy that we could have you on the show today to make these resources available to people. Um, you can, we're going to have the link on the Revelpreneur website. It's Christine Schlonsky.com. And, um, so if you're driving down the road, don't try to, to figure that out now, but <laughs> check out the website, Christine Schlonsky.com. We'll have that, uh, posted up on our site as well underneath this episode. Uh, Christine, it has really been a pleasure to have you on Rebelpreneur. Any final thoughts or words of wisdom that you would like to leave us with? Yes, I'd love to. Um, stop just dreaming, act now. Because if you can only serve a handful of people, that's not living your full potential. That's not why, you, why you're why here. So get really clear on, on your value and just go out there and have a conversation with another human. There's nothing to fear. Have a good conversation. Be of service. And, uh, you know, the, the money will follow your success. Mm. Very, very true. Great words of wisdom from Christine Schlonsky. She is the queen of the sales success mindset, a multi-talented leader in the field of sales success mindset, motivation, and strategies. Christine works with heart-centered entrepreneurs who love what they do, but they dislike selling. And so if that describes you, check her out at christineschlonsky.com. Christine, it's been, like I said, a real pleasure to have you on Rebelpreneur Radio today. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much, Rob, for having me and for all the wonderful work you do in the world and uh, that you actually, you, you stepped up. So I really want to encourage people to do the same and find their way to express themselves. You've been listening to Rebelpreneur Radio with Ralph Brogdon. Download the show notes and much more at rebelpreneur.com.